God loves you. He made you with specific purpose, each and every single one of you, and he loves you. If you have never heard it before, you hear it now and you tuck it deep in your heart. though because Jesus came to help with all of that stuff. Jesus took our punishment, our consequence, and he paid for it on the cross when he died. But guys, it gets better than that. He came back to life. Nobody before or since has ever done that and he beat death. And because of that, there will be great celebration. awesome, isn't it? You know, our favorite part every morning, I mean, every service this morning, the favorite part was when you took cake in the face, buddy. Thank you, Heath, for doing that for us. Heath, you're doing a great job in kids' ministry, man. Thank you for being the leader that you are. Awesome job. Hey, we welcome you today. If you're not uh, from here or this is maybe a first time for you to be here, I hope that you'll walk away believing that we think children matter. And we're going to do everything we can to love them the way Jesus loves them and to pour into them. And we're going to teach them at an early age, generosity matters. You know, the Lord blesses those who bless Him. And I've just believed that we, it is more blessed to what? Give than to receive. And if that's true, and we believe it is, teach children how to be generous. So we started uh, this week talking about a project in Zambia. Uh, it's a place called Kara's House, and it means built on the word Kara's out of the Greek word grace, and it is a place for single moms, okay? Now, if you've ever been to Zambia, my family and I got to spend some time there, and it's an incredible place, but I can tell you a single mom is very vulnerable there, very vulnerable. So they needed a place, and this ministry brings them in and houses them. She, uh, it, it started by uh, Carrie McGinn, who is from our church here, and her family's here. They, uh, they just have a heart for this ministry, and she told us they need a playground. They just need something for the kids to play on, an area for the kids to play on that's safe. And, um, and so we said, how much if money would it take to get that? And she said, $10,000. So we said, okay, we'll set a goal, $10,000. We went into the week. Kids got fired up. They had a little competition going, and they gave and gave and gave. And you know what the final was that they gave? Did you see it up there? $17,000. Now, that, that's awesome. I mean, it's great. But you wait, wait till you hear this part of the story. She's here and starts crying, and she says this. The actual cost of the playground was not 10000 She just felt like that was all that she should ask. 
You know what the cost was? $17,000. Now you tell me, God, God provides, God knows, and He met that need through the boys and girls of Vacation Bible School 2024, and I'm so proud to be a part, and thank you for being a part. I just want us to be like Jesus, not like some of His disciples. Now let me explain it. Go to the Bible, Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, okay? There's a moment in the life of Jesus that's an iconic moment. I, I mean, it's the one I most often go to when I think about ministry to children, okay? So chapter 10, Mark's Gospel, and I'm going to read you what happened. Evidently, in a teaching moment, Jesus had a lot of parents bringing kids. And the di disciples said, whoa, 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 we can't have that. Watch what happened. And they were bringing children to him. This is verse 13. That he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant. And he said to them, let the children come to me. Don't hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms, and he blessed them laying his hands on them. Now, in this place, I don't know where, we don't know where he was for sure in the moment. But you can see these families coming. You can see parents. Can I first say, what a beautiful thought to see parents wanting their children to meet Jesus. Can I say thank you to every parent in this room who brings your children to meet Jesus. God bless you. Thank you. It's the greatest gift you could give your children. And I want to commend over here, we have some students who, some kids who are going to be baptized. And look at their families sitting around them. Can we give it up or just the parents over here? Thank you, guys. And what, what I want to say is this church was never called to come and take the place of the parent. That, that's not our job. Our job was to come alongside of you and help you be the best parent you can be. And so that's what we want to do. But we commend you for being people who want to bring your children to Jesus. That's where it all starts. Now, when they got there, unfortunately, they ran into some disciples. I know some disciples like this. I've been their pastor before, okay? Just hear me out. They looked at the children and the word, I'm going to use the word, rebuked them. Literally. Literally rebuke them that word in the text is the same word Jesus used when he rebuked demons you got to be kidding me disciples would speak that way to those families yeah I, I don't know why I mean was it the culture of the day yeah partly because the Romans really didn't have a place for children they were not very kid friendly in fact if you didn't like one of your kids you just put them out on the street so if they're not cleaning the room up like you want to, just, okay, see you later. You'll be all right out there somewhere. That's what the Romans believed. And then the Jewish teaching, the rabbis didn't believe teaching ought to happen with a child in the room because they thought a child was like talking to an to a ignorant person. And, and they couldn't understand anything, so why mess with them? I think that's why it's so cool that Jesus showed up at the temple when he was 12 years old and he astounded the teachers of the law. Isn't that, isn't that just like God? Just to show you, hey, don't count these little ones out. But here's the deal. They rebuked them because they thought they were in the way. They wanted to protect Jesus. Can I just tell you, Jesus doesn't need our protection. He needs our obedience. He needs us to follow what he showed us. He needs us to have the heart and the love of Jesus. We are not in the city of Orlando to protect Jesus. We're in the city of Orlando to let Orlando know about Jesus Christ. He can take care of himself. But yet they thought, oh, we're going to protect, and so here we go. I want to be the kind of church that speaks love to families, to kids, and speaks the love of Jesus through everything we do, through our buildings, through our programs, through everything. I, I want to be the kind of church that children can't wait to get there. They look forward to going. I remember the day I fell out of love with the church. 
because I didn't find any reason to be there. I didn't find anything at all. And I'm not saying it was that church's fault. I just know it's the, nat- the, the natural gravitational pull of kids. As they grow up, they tend to pull away. I want to be a church where children consistently are treated with respect. And they're loved. And they're safe. And they can know the love of God through just the people that are serving them. And they can hear about the love of God as the gospel is proclaimed. I mean, you heard part of the video. That's Allison Hodges who's married to one of our pastors, Jason Hodges. Man, she was bringing it. That was the gospel. That's what we promise kids will hear and they will know. So we're not going to be like the disciples. (laughs) We're going to welcome them. What did Jesus do? He said, let them come. I mean, it was like his arms were wide open. Let the children come. If you grew up in the church, you might have grown up with the King James Version. The King James Version of the Bible says it this way, suffer the little children to come. I don't mind telling you that that phrase messed me up for many years because I couldn't connect suffering with a child going to Jesus. And it didn't make sense. I didn't realize that the old English word suffer is really the word let them come. And so Jesus is saying, let them come. And then he takes them in his arms And he blesses them. In fact, the Bible says that he was indignant toward his own disciples because they were holding them back. The word indignant, it's only used one time in the New Testament, and it's used here. Jesus was indignant. What does it mean? Grieved. It means it broke his heart. I don't want to break the heart of our Lord. I want this to be a place where everybody's welcome. I want us to treat people the way Jesus was treating them. Because you know what? Inasmuch as we've done it to the least of these, we have done it unto him. We're going to love like he loved. He was heartbroken. And then he takes these children, the most beautiful, precious. I mean, he holds them, and, and he holds them in his arms, and he blesses them. Now, that word bless is a really cool word. And I want to, I want to tell you what I think that he's talking about. But why would Jesus be so intentional? about these children and making sure they got to him and making sure that there was this moment. I'll tell you why. He knew something we need to learn. Here it is. The older they get, the harder they are to reach for Jesus. The older we get, the harder. They tell us by the adolescent years that a child has already formed a worldview. By adolescent years, a child has already kind of made a decision on what they're going to follow, what they're going to believe, what is their process of truth, and how do they determine truth. I mean, all of that is already set. So in those early years, there's opportunity that may not be as available to us later. So why not turn the building upside down? Why not take a service and devote it to that? Why not take a week and pour out everything we can? Because we know the longer that we wait, the harder it's going to be to see Jesus change their life. Not because of the power of Jesus, but because of a closed heart. So here's a statement George Barnes said. He said, there's a race for the heart of children. Whoever gets there first will win. I want to get there first. Because I want to show you what that looks like. Let's make it graphic. This is from the most recent data. Okay? The most recent data and survey. Come on, jammers. Give them up. I mean, give a hand for these jammers. You guys are great. You know, I always wished I could dance like that. All right. So they represent, 10 kids represent all of this country, okay? Now, let's break it down. What about all the kids in in our country from the ages of 5 to 13? How many statistically will come to Christ between the ages of 5 and 13? If they represent all the kids, Let me show how many will come to Christ according to our most recent statistics. Okay, guys, sit down. There you go. 32%. That's it. That's between the ages of 5 and 13. 32%. Now watch this. 
Let's say they graduate kids ministry and they go to the next level, which is student ministry. Lower school, I mean, upper school, middle school. How many between the ages of 14 and 18 will give their life to Christ statistically? Okay, go ahead. 14%. That's 1.4. We couldn't figure out the point four, so, so uh, <laughs> we talked. Well, he just, we'll kneel. How about that? One point, I mean, 14%, but it gets worse. So after they go to college, when a kid graduates from high school in this country and goes off to college, let's say he's 19 plus years Watch what happens. We're down to 6%. Now, I'll just ask you, which one do we have a better shot at making a difference? The younger, the better. The more opportunity. We had three standing a minute ago. We only have a half of one standing now. You now know why we will do everything we can through kids' ministry to provide an atmosphere and a context for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, guys. Good job, Jammers. Facts and thanks, man, for being the kneeling one, all right? They were great. Y'all didn't do much on this end. Y'all just sat down, didn't you? That's why we do it. Because... We know what happens. Maybe Jesus knew that. Of course he did. And so what did he do? He took them in his arms and blessed them. The word bless, you see that word? You know what it means? It doesn't just mean he went, bless your children, okay? No, no. Have you ever been to a funeral and heard a eulogy? Eulogy. It's a Greek word. It comes from two words, good and words. It means a good word spoken about somebody. That word is eulogy with a prefix, which means, are you ready? He took them in his arms and he spoke good into their life. I don't think he did it as a group. I think he took them one at a time and he spoke something into them. I think he held those children, he wrapped them up, and he looked them in the eye and he spoke good into their life. That is what God is calling us to do. And how do we do it? Well, I'll tell you one way we do it is when they follow Christ, we celebrate with them. We rejoice with them. We let them know, man, we're so proud of you. And I think a celebration or a party is a way to do that. So today, we're going to celebrate with these families and we're going to speak good into them first by praying for them. So I'm going to invite all the families that are going to be involved in the baptism. Come on up here. Join me up here as they're coming. Hey, give them a little encouragement, would you? We're going to line them up. I'm, I'll get you guys to line up all the way across the platform. Now, we got, a, we got quite a few coming, so this will be a great time to meet your neighbor. Just say hello. Hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. Oh, that's awesome. Isn't this great? I told these parents one thing they can't do during the baptism is hold their kids under until they bubble. Sorry, we can't. That's, that's, we can't do that. But they're going to get to be a part of it. Let me explain what baptism is. Baptism is not salvation. Okay, we don't baptize to save. We baptize because they've already been saved. It's a way of letting you see what's happened in their life. So that's why it's a big celebration moment is because, hey, these guys are going to say Jesus is Lord because they want you to know they're not ashamed of Christ. So in a minute, we're going to, man, they're still coming. How awesome is this? That's so cute. Come on up. Yeah, there we go. Start another line. You guys come on up in front. You getting a good shot of that? 
This is so cool. I don't even know where to stand. Yeah, man. Let's come on one more time. Give it up for these folks. Good night. I'll stand down here with y'all. All All right, so what's about to happen? They're going to go and get ready. But before they do, I just think this would be a moment, though we can't do it individually. As a church, we can speak a good word into them by praying for them, praying for the peace and the favor of God on their home, and that the Lord would bless them and keep them, cause His face to shine upon them, and give them grace. And give them peace all the way. So would you stand with me? And I want you, when you stand, I want you to lift your hand toward them. And let's say a prayer. Just in your own words, pray that the Lord will bless these families. Father, I want to thank you for every one of these families that are here. And God, I thank you that you have done something in their home that they'll never forget. And it'll never be the same. Because every one of these children that have given their life to follow you and trust you. Lord, you have called them by name. You've called them to yourself. And I pray you will help them to grow in the nurture of the Lord and grow in the ways of the Lord and help mom and dad to show them the way. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Bless these homes. In Jesus' name, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. All right. You guys, go back to the back. Get ready. Keith, come on up. Take it away, man. Let's do this. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for being here today. What a beautiful picture of the why behind what we do. Um, This is what it's all about right here. And I just want to encourage you. I know many of you in the audience serve in kids or have served in kids in the past. Maybe you're thinking about it in the future. But when you say yes to serving... You're saying yes to being a part of life change. So whether you rocked them in the nursery or you were sitting before them when they made a decision, you're equally part of this time together as we celebrate um, baptism. So we'll go ahead and get started and hear from our first uh, friends that are getting into the waters. And we just hear a little bit about their story and their profession of faith. My name is Arlene, and Jesus is my Savior. My name is Ariana, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Based on both of your professions of faith, it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Louisa, and Jesus is my Savior. My name is Roman, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Awesome. All right. Based on your professions of faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. my Lord and Savior. Great job. My name is Eli, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Based on your professions of faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a parent being baptized today as well. That's awesome. My name is Fabricio. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Amen. 
My name is Mia, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Based on your professions of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm Nicole, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. My name's Sophia, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Based on your professions of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. My name is Olivia, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. My name is Avian, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Based on your professions of faith and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have a mom being baptized this morning. Hello, my name is Emma, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Hi, my name is Anika, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Based on your professions of faith and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Romina. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Another mom. My name is Isabella, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Based on your professions of faith and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. My name is Tiago, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. All right. My name is Paxton, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Based on your professions of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Valentina and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. My name is Scarlett and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Awesome. Well, based on your professions of faith and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. My name is Isla Pham, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. My name is 
Daniel, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Awesome. All right, based on your professions of faith and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. My name is Bryce, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Hello, my name is James, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, based on your professions of faith and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and Holy Spirit. My name is Peyton, and Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. My name is Gabriel, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, based on your professions of faith and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yay! My name is Rebecca, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. My name is Deborah, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Awesome. Amen. Based on your professions of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Laura, Laura, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. My name is Laura, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Awesome. Based on your professions of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> my name is Daniel, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. <laughs> my name is Esther, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Based on your professions of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Mariah, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, based on your profession of faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Is that exciting or what? We're so thankful uh, for you today. I believe Pastor David's headed up, but just thank you for celebrating with us today. And we're just so thankful to see all God is doing uh, in and through this amazing church. God bless you guys.
Wasn't that amazing? Then it just, there's something that that does watching it. So maybe that's what Jesus meant when he said, if you don't become like a child, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. I mean, it was in the verse in Mark, but also in Matthew 18, Jesus said at another occasion, truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. It's a common theme through the New Testament. So what does it mean? Maybe it means that we're supposed to follow them. Maybe it means that that faith that you just saw, again, that didn't save them, but that just demonstrated their obedience to him to say, hey, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Maybe that's what we need. I used to think that when Jesus said, you know, unless you become like a child, he was talking about humility. And then we had three children. And I, no, that's not what he was talking about. Seriously, we've all seen the scuffles and all of that. So what does he mean? Maybe he meant be teachable. You ever wonder why kids ask so many questions? Your kids ever drive you crazy going, why? Why? Why is that? What is that about? What is that about? We had the privilege, Rachel and I took our grandchildren to Wild Florida the other day. And uh, man, I answered questions on zebras and giraffes. I never knew. I mean, it was just constant, but it was like they're learning. They want to know. What about you? Do you want to follow Jesus? You want to know everything you can? You want to be his disciple? So maybe it means to be teachable. Maybe it means to be dependent. You know, something about a child, they, they, they're, yeah, they've got their own way of doing things, but there's a moment where they can't reach the door. You have to open it for them. They can't drive. They can't do a lot of things. So what do they depend upon us? You know, all those soccer practices and all those gymnastics time, all that stuff you got to get them to, you have to take them. Do you realize there's only one person who can get you in heaven? And it's not you. It's not you. We, in my home, <laughs> Rachel and I, we laugh. Our kids love this story. Our daughter, our youngest, when she was about the age, she was able to climb up in the minivan and then climb up into her car seat. And she wanted to do it by herself. And so you'd have to just stand and watch. And so one day she's getting into the van and she makes it finally up to about to sit down. She's just about to sit down. I lose patience. I'm saying, come on, let's get this going. And I reach in and I just picked her up a little bit and sat her down. She looked up at me and said, all by myself and got all the way back out. <laughs> Started all over. What is that? Well, there's that part of us too. Can I just tell you, you can't do it all by yourself. Jesus is the only one who can do it. We have to learn to be dependent on him. And then maybe another word, trusting. You know, kids are trusting. They, that, that's why this world can be a very dangerous world for them. They trust you. That's exactly what Jesus said, trusting. And I believe that today, that picture, what you did in watching those kids, there's somebody in this room that says, I'm following. I'm going to do what they did. I'm following Jesus. Now, we're not talking about maybe being baptized today, but at least that first step. The Old Testament in Isaiah says, and a child shall lead them. What, what does that mean? Well, I think it means that sometimes we learn by watching. And you saw something today that hopefully stirred in you. And I believe there's somebody in this room that it's time to depend on him. You can't do it on your own. It's time to trust in him. You can give him all of it. You can lay your life down in his hands. And you can for sure learn from him how to be like Jesus. He's the best teacher I know. Can we bow our heads just for a moment? In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to come and, and we want to pray for you. We want to spend just a moment to say it is the day to take that step. It is time. And today 
is such a beautiful day to do it. Lord, I want to pray for any in this room that having seen this, just, just watching kids take those steps of faith and believing and trusting in you. Lord, I pray that we will do the same. If that's where we are and what we need to do, Lord, help us become like a child and take you at your word and follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to stand with me. As we stand together, we're going to sing an old hymn. It, it's, a, it's a hymn you probably know. It's Amazing Grace. And I'm going, to, I'm going to come down, and I'm going to stand down here because I just want to encourage you. I, I, I want to let you know you just took the greatest step, and you let children show you the way. Literally. You became like them. You became like a child. And I promise you, according to his word, you'll see the kingdom of heaven. Anybody in this room that needs to take that step, we'll be here to celebrate you. Put your trust in him. Say, Lord, I need you. I depend on you. Well, I want to learn everything I can because I'm following you. You come as we sing together. sing the next stanza it talks about the journey we've been on and how God's journey how grace has taught us how to fear and how to serve and how to follow you know watching children sometimes you wonder man I wish I could go back and do it all over again I wish I could start at that age well the truth of it is we we can't you know that but you know what the gospel assures you that it's never too late to start and you can start today just like a child saying I'm following you with however many years I got left Lord I'm gonna follow you and you'll see this verse is really true let's sing it come just say hey pastor David I really need to take that step to follow Jesus the rest of my days as we sing this Twas grace that A, there's a story we're going to sing the part that talks about when we've been there 10,000 years and that verse tells me one day we're going home with him one day we're going to spend forever with him we don't know when that day will come we just know I want to be ready a minute ago a young lady came down and I know her I know her well 
And she was just weeping. I mean, literally just weeping. You see, she and her husband would be here every weekend. But what she didn't know is that he was dying of cancer. When they finally discovered it, it was really late in the game. And she just recently said goodbye to him. And she just came just to to cry out to the Lord. I wish I could promise you that your life will be long and you'll see many, many opportunities to say, Jesus, I need you. I'm not about to tell you that because I know better. But I do know this. You have this moment. And to put your trust and your faith in Jesus is to say, hey, I, I don't have it all figured out, but I'm following you. And when that moment comes, guess what? He says, come on, let's go home. I got you. You're mine. And so I want us to sing this. Now, we're, we're not talking about come and be baptized and all. We can talk about baptism later. That's the next step you take. We're just talking about that step of faith so you become like a child. So one day you will enter that kingdom and you will be home in heaven. As we sing this, can we just, if somebody right on the, on the verge, Go ahead and guys go to that last stanza. When we've been there. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We sing it one more time with just the words praise God when you witness what we've seen today the only thing you say praise God let's sing it praise God 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 God. They're going to, in just a moment, yes, thank you, Lord. We're going to sing one more. I'm not sure what it is. Okay. Hey, if you were here and sitting through that and you think, man, I really, I I would like to talk to somebody about that next step, we can help you. You just text the words next to 40777. Or you can go on either side. When we dismiss, there are people there ready to have that conversation. What we want you to know is, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for helping us celebrate what God is doing in the kids of this church and through a great week of Vacation Bible School. Hadn't it been awesome just to see what God's done? Celebrate it. We also, we want you to know there's joy in the house of the Lord. And we want you to look forward to coming to church as much as they look forward to coming to church And so now we're going to sing a song. It just says, this is the house of the Lord. Let's rejoice. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. Come on, you shout this now, say There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet, we shout out.
you all so much for joining us this week. Listen, we hope to see you next week. Bring somebody, invite them to come sit with you, and we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful week, y'all.